Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Forrest Norad from AMD. Hey, Justin, great to see you. Great to see you, Forrest. And, and Forrest, just to make sure, you, you know that I'm no longer a customer. I'm now a competitor, right? Well, you know, I still count you as a friend. My feelings towards you are complex now. <laughs> you know, I know we tried to make this look impromptu, but actually, AMD and Intel have been talking for quite a while about how we can help ecosystem developers without sacrificing the innovation of the x86 architecture or diminishing competition, but it's an architecture that's near and dear to both of our hearts, and we think that it can get even better for our ecosystem. Uh, exactly, and that's why we're jointly announcing the, the x86, x86 Ecosystem, ecosystem Advisory, Advisory Group. Group. Yeah, the advisory group's input, combined with our roadmaps, will unleash exciting innovation up and down the stack. And why does this matter to you? Well, it'll simplify ecosystem software development and maintenance. It'll reduce friction for developers to maximize performance, efficiency, and accelerate innovation. Create an avenue for X86 hardware and software communities, our stakeholders, to request functions and features for the x86 architecture. And it enhances choice of compatible hardware and software through a universal x86 interface architecture, starting today with a focus on the future. Exactly, and we're not the only ones that think this is a great idea. Yeah, Forrest, you might, you might recognize a few of these names. There's a couple of our mutual customers up there. Um, and these are not just customers, but you see luminaries, industry titans that have helped us shape generations of this technology alongside us. That's right, together with our partners, they've helped define the future of our industry and their collaboration will help us continue to drive innovation forward. And this is just the kickoff of the advisory group. Over time, we expect to grow the number and the diversity of participants. That's right, and we'll meet, define, debate, listen, and then act in the best interests of the x86 ecosystem and the broad community. And speaking of the best interest of this of the x86 ecosystem, Forrest, this little friendship won't quench our robust competitive spirit. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And so you may have noticed we announced a few things last week. We announced the next generation of AMD Instinct accelerators, and pertinent to this conversation, the fifth generation of Epic Xeon, uh, sorry, Epic server <laughs> CPUs. <laughs> I like that. I Even like better that. than Xeon. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, uh, uh, that, that, are, that are just absolutely kick-ass products. But you introduced some stuff recently as well. Yeah, and I, I, you know, we kept our Xeon brand, but we're, uh, we're excited <laughs> to be back at the game. You know, we, we, we're, we're excited with Xeon 6 because we think we're back in the game with a competitive platform on, on performance and power efficiency. And we know that this is going to be beneficial for our ecosystem. That's right. Competition is great for all of our stakeholders for the ecosystem. They're both great machines. Let's let the best products win. Well, Forrest, thanks so much. I can't wait to see what we, what we do collectively Absolutely. together. But I hope what you take away from this is simple x86 has been the de facto standard in the industry for the last four decades. And it's continuing to win because of the best performance, the best efficiency, and the broadest compatibility with the application and software ecosystem. And we're not stopping there. We're committed to giving you the tools you need to stay competitive in the AI era. You know, x86 has been the ecosystem of choice, and it's not just been the ecosystem of choice in, in the data center, but of course across the PC, and we've seen it extend to new edge use cases, to applications and segments in telco, and down into embedded devices. So my call to action, my ask for, you know, of all of you, is continue to lean in with us. Bring us your toughest challenges. Bring us your requ requirements. And don't let old preconceptions about us hold you back. We're here to help you drive innovation. We're, here, com we're committed to taking x86 to new heights. And we're committed to ensuring it's your CPU architecture for the, for the long-term future. Thank you, and Forrest, I'll turn it over to you for your talk. Thanks very much, Justin. All right. Take care. Take care.
So thanks very much to Justin, and thanks very much to all of you for being here. Uh, it's, it's great to be back here once again. I was here at the very first Global Summit and a few times since. And one of the reasons that uh, this is so important is, is AMD has been invested in OCP and in Open for a very long time. We've recently increased our investment in OCP, joining the advisory board, uh, generating new uh, 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 contributions around management, around security, around firmware. And we've done that because we believe that OCP has helped the community address the most significant challenges of the data center since its inception. And today, what challenge is larger, as you've heard from many speakers already, and you're going to hear for the next two days, than AI. It presents the largest inflection point, the biggest opportunity, the greatest set of challenges for our industry. Now, as a chip guy, the opportunity side of this is truly amazing. You know, you can argue about the exact numbers, but look, we see that the opportunity just for, even for silicon has increased for AI systems from $45 billion last year to over $100 billion this year and on its way perhaps to $500 billion in a few years. The reason that's grown so much, of course, is because of charts like this that you've seen from many folks over the last 18 months. The compute demands of generative AI continue to accelerate. If the scaling hypothesis is correct, and we see capability of models continue to grow as the model sizes grow, you're going to keep seeing charts like this. Now, along with this, of course, you also see charts like this, which shows that the total amount of energy required to train those large models is continuing to go up even as we're all working to make the silicon, the systems, ever more efficient. And this is a big problem. Bringing it down maybe to a more concrete level of the things that all of us touch within this room, these factors of increasing compute requirements and power requirements are causing the complexity to grow at every point of scale. From chips now having thousands of square millimeters of silicon deployed across multiple chiplets within a package that used to dissipate maybe 500 watts, 1,000 watts today, 2,000 watts in the very, very near future. The similar evolution in terms of compute density and power is happening at the rack, the cluster, the data center level. So tremendous complexity increasing throughout the system. Now, luckily, the industry actually knows how to build systems of this complexity. The supercomputer industry has been doing it for many years. At AMD, we've been privileged to be part of two of the most significant supercomputers of recent history. The Frontier System at Oak Ridge National Labs, which was the first system to break the exascale barrier and has been at the top of the top 500 list for the last several years and the El Capitan system, which we expect next month will take its place at the top of the 500 list when its uh, published results hit. Now, both of these systems are amazing. Both of these systems consist of tens of thousands of CPUs and GPUs. They reach power densities in excess of 400 kilowatts per cabinet, and they're all connected, of course, with highly advanced networking. The problem is that it takes a long time to build and deploy these systems, and the industry is only geared up to build a few of them every few years. To meet these compute demands, we need to build many more systems, and we need to get it done much faster. Now, the lesson, one of the key lessons from these supercomputers has been that in order to bring out all of the performance and to do so efficiently, you have to do co-design and co-optimization of hardware and software at every level of scale. From the chips that must be designed from the beginning to comprehend the needs of the system, of the cluster, of the data center, to the software where the reliability and, and manageability aspects that permeate down into the software have to bubble up and be reflected even at the model and application level. Building efficient systems means putting, building it all together. Now, 
Some companies would tell you that in order to do this level of co-design and co-optimization, one company has to do it all. They have to do the design, the fundamental architecture of the hardware and the software. This is a reversion to the earliest days of the computer industry where we had the companies such as IBM doing a complete stack of hardware, a complete stack of proprietary software. At AMD, we utterly reject the notion that this is the path forward. We believe firmly that no one company, no one individual, no one group of engineers is as smart of all of us working together. And that, <laughs> that open, truly open, is the right way to go forward. Now, in order to do this, in order to uh, uh, co-optimize and collaborate, co-design on an open level, you, you have to bring together all of the ecosystem and you have to do so by creating levels of abstraction that allow the individual elements to progress and to provide value to one another. This may seem hard, but let me give you a recent example of a co-optimization even across company boundaries over a standard uh, interface. One example is that the recent uh, AMD Turin, fifth generation Turin processor designed specifically for head node applications, it's a five gigahertz part, truly remarkable, has been designed to accelerate GPU uh, cluster maintenance tasks, kernel launches, data movement, feeding the beast. And just by that optimization, it can wring 20, 15 to 20% more performance out of the GPUs for training and inference applications. And so even across company boundaries, even across competitor boundaries, where you've got a level of abstraction properly defined, you can find that co-optimization. And it is about finding those levels of abstraction. Many of you may know the principle of Gall's Law, and it's something we believe very firmly in. Gall's Law states that any complex system that works has evolved from simpler systems that worked. If you want to build a complex system, you need to start by evolving elements from a simpler working system. We believe that firmly, and we've seen that principle hold true in the development of these supercomputers over the years. One example, just from the systems that I showed you before, is the evolution from Frontier to El Capitan. In Frontier, we had CPUs and GPUs interconnected by coherent links that facilitated the transfer of data from CPU memory to GPU memory and back and forth. That was evolved forward in El Capitan by taking the next logical step, combining the CPU and the GPU into one package, bringing them ever so close together, and unifying the memory so that the, the system, the, each element of the computing system really shared truly one unified pool of memory, eliminating in many cases memory copies and dramatically speeding up the applications and models. We believe that OCP can help enable the principles underlying and powering Gal's law by enabling the complex to evolve from simple elements. Some great examples of this recently are the ORV3 rack, which candidly has provided the, the infrastructure for the vast majority of AI systems that have been delivered to date. Similarly, the work and other elements of the systems from the OAM and UBB form factors, the, the early work that's been done on uh, cooling and liquid cooling, even things like DCMHS, all of these provide a substrate, a set of abstraction points, a set standards upon which we can build the AI systems of the future. The same thing holds true for software. And the rest of the travelers in this open ecosystem have been working to build those levels of abstraction. What is PyTorch but a level of abstraction between the model and the underlying uh, hardware. And to my apologies to my friends at Meta and the PyTorch Foundation, I know I'm dramatically oversimplifying, but it's a level of abstraction that allows innovation to continue at multiple layers. Likewise, Triton, it allows you to do optimized 
uh, compute kernels without being tied down to a proprietary interface. This pattern holds true across the software ecosystem, and I think it's incredibly important to continuing the rate and pace of innovation in AI systems. We're also seeing this in other standards uh, that are adjacent. These have already been mentioned a few times. Justin referred to them earlier as well. You have open Ethernet, or sorry, ultra Ethernet, that is evolving Ethernet into what we believe will be the preferred high TCO, high, you know, best TCO, high performance solution for backend networks that scales out to hundreds of thousands of nodes. Similarly, Ultra Accelerator Link takes the XGMI interface that AMD donated to the consortium, and it itself is an evolution from Hyperlink from many, many years ago. And it allows the fabric to interconnect to systems that a pod be open and have many of the companies in this room innovate on top of. And so, in closing, what I'd like to say is, it's a truism, obviously, that AI is the biggest inflection point in our future. And if you look at what's going to be required, it is absolutely critical that we have co-optimization of hardware and software at every level of the solution. But that co-optimization does not mean proprietary is required. It does not mean that the system is locked down and held by one or a small number of companies. It's open to all of us. And look, if AMD and Intel can collaborate together on driving x86 you know, forward, if pigs can fly, then clearly all of us can work together to drive the AI uh, innovation and to deliver the systems the industry is going to need. And let's get together. Let's define those standards, those levels of abstractions. Let's start simple from what we've got. Let's make it work and then build on it. Thank you so much.